Using loops is a great way to reduce the complexity of your prototype and save time when you're repeating common elements, such as in this Facebook notifications prototype, where each notification shares a common pattern, a profile picture, text, timestamp, and a glyph. Download the lesson files to follow along as we rebuild this prototype using loops. You'll see from our starting lesson files that we've already set up all our layers that we just mentioned, but for one notification. If I wanted to make a few rows of notifications without loops, I could just copy and paste the groups using the shortcuts Command C and then Command V and then reordering these. Or I could use Command D for duplicate and again, keep adding them and so on. And then once I've done that, swap out all the information within each one, the text, profile picture, glyph, and notification text. But this is obviously getting laborious. If I wanted to swap out each photo and name, I need to go to each profile picture and each text layer and swap things out. Even worse, what if later on we wanted to change the format so they had a darker, unread background color? We'd have to go through each one of these and do that manually. So let's delete all these extra instances of our notification. So this is the duplicate. All right, back to our first one. With loops, we can use our one notification as an instance and repeat it. If we want to change one thing across all the notifications, we can do it once and have it reflect across all of them. To create a loop, double tap anywhere in your patch editor and start typing in loop. Find the loop, patch, and then press return. We know that we want six of these notifications, so let's change the count to six. And then let's connect the index output to the Y position of our notification layer. Because we want our notifications to be stacked up vertically. If you hide the Chrome group temporarily, you'll find each of these six notifications seemingly stacked up on the very top. They're actually positioned 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 points vertically away from each other, starting at a Y position of 0. That's because the loop patch will give us, in this case, six values and numbers starting from 0, which were connecting directly to a Y position of our notification. So for example, our sixth and last, which is number 5 in the index, is 5 points down from the very top. Even though it looks like one notification, there's actually six instances of the layer group. First of all, let's make these not stack on top of each other. We know that these notifications are 80 points high, and we know that we have six of these. And we also know that our index values are zero through five. So to have them sit 80 points from each other, let's multiply their indexes by 80. Double tap on the patch editor and find the multiplication patch by typing asterisk and then press return. Connect the loop index output to one input on the multiplication patch. And then let's make the other input 80. Let's then connect the output of the multiplication patch to the position Y of our notification. You can see now that the index value times 80 will position them exactly on top of each other. If you scrub over the 80 and change that value, you can see how you can add a gutter and understand a little bit more about how this works. Also, notice how the connection between these patches is green. That's a little affordance in origami to tell us what we're connecting is a loop. Any green nodes can be tapped on to inspect the loop values like we've been doing so far. Okay, so our six notifications are actually being covered up by this chrome. We need to push these down equally to just below the chrome. Let's double tap on the patch editor, start typing in plus for addition, and then press return. Let's then insert this between the multiplication and notification position Y layer property patch. 
going to replace this connection by taking the output from the multiplication patch to an input on the addition patch and then taking that output into the position Y to replace that old connection. Next, let's scrub the second input to work out how far these notifications need to be pushed down or offset. Okay, looks like 116 is the sweet spot. Now each looped notification is offset by 116 points, so they sit below the chrome. Up to now, we've changed all instances of the notification with its position. How do we change individual things about each notification? The profile pictures, for example. Make sure you have the lesson files handy. In there, you'll find a folder of profile picture images. Let's navigate to that folder and drag it into Origami. What we end up with is a loop builder patch with all our profile pictures as inputs. Let's connect the image output of our loop builder to our profile picture image input and see what happens. The loop builder patch loops through each notification and assigns an image to each one in order. Again, think about if we had six duplicates of this folder and had to go through each one and manually add a picture. We can do the same thing with our timestamp glyph. So let's grab our icons, drag them in to origami as a loop builder patch and then connect the image output to the image property of the timestamp glyph. And you'll notice that each one of these changes as well. The difference between the loop patch and the loop builder patches is that the loop builder patch gives us an index plus a type of layer as well. In this case, images. Let's insert a new loop builder patch. Double tap in the patch editor or type command return and type until you find loop builder, then press return. Next, let's control or right click on that loop builder patch and change the number of inputs to six. Let's do that again and change the type to text. We're going to use this new loop builder patch to replace our notification text. I've already filled one in, so feel free to type whatever you like into these inputs. Let's then connect the strings output from our loop builder patch to the notification text layers text input. Have a look at the viewer whilst you do this to see all the changes that are happening from doing so. Let's repeat this whole process for the notification text. Instead of adding another patch and changing its type and number of inputs, we can just option click and drag our existing one and then just change the values to whatever you like. Again, I've already prepared one, but feel free to type whatever you like into these inputs. Lastly, let's connect the strings output here to the timestamp text layers text input. Keep an eye on the viewer as we do this. You can probably imagine how annoying it would be to have to do this manually on six duplicates of these layers, especially if you wanted to change some styling or something else across them all. Check out some of the examples, as well as the next tutorial on interactive loops to get loops properly into your workflow.